Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about the characteristics of um, minerals and how we identify them. First characteristic that I'll talk about today is color. And this is the same mineral. These are all quartz crystals. And you can see how different the colors are. So color can be useful uh, to some degree, but many times it can be misleading because this is quartz, this is quartz, and so is this. So many minerals have similar colors, um, or I should say many minerals have lots of different colors, and some minerals may look similar in color, like this calcite and this quartz have similar color, um, so you wouldn't be able to identify them just based on the color, but it can be one of the things that we use to help identify them. So that's color. The next is... Whether I hope a, we didn't get that in the thingy. I think we did, but that's okay. Uh. So the next is whether a mineral cleaves or fractures. So cleavage and fracture are how the mineral breaks. And I'll use this as an example. You should always wear goggles when you're using um, using the, the using a hammer. Um, so we have this mineral calcite, and when I break it. It breaks along really nice flat surfaces. So every time it breaks, it breaks along one of these, what's called a cleavage plane. And these planes, where these minerals break, are called cleavage planes. And that is called cleavage, where it breaks on a nice and flat surface. And it smells too. <laughs> Fracture, on the other hand, is very different. Fracture, if you look at these minerals, this quartz and this olivine, they both break along uneven surfaces. So I'm not going to break these because I don't have very many samples of these, but when these break, there are no nice flat surfaces like the calcite or this biotite mica. When this breaks, as you can see, it breaks along nice flat surfaces. It peels off this um, mica. So that's cleavage as opposed to fracture, which quartz and olivine are examples of that. The next characteristic that we use to help identify minerals is how these minerals um, have a streak. And streak is when you rub a mineral along an unglazed piece of porcelain. It's an un unglazed piece of clay pot, basically. And you take the mineral and you just rub it along that. And if it leaves a color leaves a color, that is very, very characteristic of a particular mineral. So hematite has a red-brown streak. Even if the mineral is really silvery, it still has a red-brown streak. Other examples of hematite that have red-brown streak. Um, so you can see, again, there's that color difference. These two minerals, these are exactly the same mineral, but one is a different color than another. The other examples of streak would be uh, gray or silver streak. And some minerals, like this calcite, don't leave any streak at all. When I rub it on there, it doesn't have, leave any color. So it would have either no streak or a white streak. So that's streak in terms of helping to identify minerals. That's another characteristic. And then the last, um, next to last, is called hardness. And what we use to identify hardness are, is a glass plate. Uh, hardness, again, if you remember from your notes, is it's on a scale from 1 to 10. Uh, 1 being the softest, 10 being the hardest as a diamond. Uh, a glass plate is about 5.5. So if a mineral, like this quartz, scratches the glass, then the mineral is harder than the glass. So if I take this and I push down on it, it leaves a scratch on that. And I have to pat, push relatively hard, and you can see the, the glass being scratched. The mineral doesn't um, break uh, because the mineral is harder than the glass. It scratched the glass. So if I take it and use this calcite and try and rub it on there, I see that there's some powder here left over, but that's because the calcite is softer than the glass. It doesn't leave a scratch if I wipe this away and I push really hard, even though I push really hard, the, 
there is no scratch on this glass because this is softer, which is less than 5.5, than the, than the glass. Your fingernail is at about a 2, 2.5, so if you can scratch the mineral and leave scratches on it, then the mineral is softer than your fingernail. If you scratch your fingernail, and you can, I can see scratches on my fingernail, that means that this mineral is harder than 2.5, but it's less than 5.5. So we can narrow down our hardness using that. Um, another thing that we use to identify minerals is whether they're metallic or not metallic. Even if they're shiny, these, some of these minerals can be really shiny, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're metallic. This is shiny, but it's also see-through. If you can see through a mineral, it is not metallic. Metallic luster, as it's called, um, is, is the way that light reflects off of that mineral. Here is metallic. This is non-metallic. Another example of metallic mineral um, here. There are lots of, basically metallics look like a shiny metal. Non-metallic minerals either can be glassy, they can be earthy, they can be pearly. There's lots of different lusters for non-metallic minerals, but the metallics are very obviously shiny metals. Um, one other thing that I just want to point out is crystal form. And if we look at this quartz, you can see these nice flat surfaces here. Those don't necessarily mean that this is cleavage. Cleavage is how the mineral breaks, and when the mineral breaks, it breaks unevenly like this quartz or this part down here. So if I were to take a hammer and smash this, this wouldn't break evenly along smooth surfaces. But when the crystal grows, so when this solidifies from a, a liquid and it's crystallizing, it forms these regular arranged um, crystals, but that is not cleavage. It's, it's a little bit different thing, and we can talk more about that if you have questions. Um, but those are some of the characteristics that we use to identify these minerals. and. I'll talk about some of the special characteristics in another video cast, um, and I think that's it for now. Thanks, Ruby, for helping.